the Institute for Health and Society is the Department of Population and Health Sciences at the Medical College. This video shows the value and vitality of the Institute from the experiences of some of our academic and community partners and students. The Institute includes 24 faculty, 30 staff, and 19 PhD students in the areas of biostatistics, bioethics, epidemiology, public health education, population health improvement, health equity and urban partnerships, and global health. Our mission is to improve health and advance equity through partnerships. Our reason for being is to analyze those data to make sense out of things. And uh, the Division of Biostatistics has been crucial to that effort, not just because they collaborate with us, but because they have pioneered the development of statistical methodologies appropriate for this kind of outcomes research. The availability of high quality statistical support, not just statistical support to do analyses, but um, innovative development of statistical methodology has been an important factor in our favorable reviews. In fact, earlier this year, uh, on our, I think it's our fourth renewal of our U24 from the NIH for this outcomes registry, we received a priority score of 10. And that's the best you can get. <laughs> and five of the six reviewers specifically cited the methodological research of our Division of Biostatistics as a strength of the application. In the current funding climate, the loss of that strength probably meant the difference between our renewal and, our non -re and a non-renewal. Its crucial role in our drive to become an NCI-designated cancer center is, is just one piece. Uh, excellent biostatistical support is also important for many other research programs on this campus, the cardiovascular center. I'm neurosciences. It's hard to think of a, a program with an active clinical research program or laboratory research program that doesn't benefit by having world-class biostatistics for support. Methodologic work by MCW biostatisticians have been cited in more than 200 biostatistical papers and, of course, in many BMT papers, but in more than 80 clinical papers um, that had nothing to do with BMT. So they're developing methodology for clinical uh, analyses, for statistical analyses that are being used widely in the medical field. They're terrific people in two ways. First, they provide a very fundamental service uh, for routine statistics because most biologists are not good statisticians and we need uh, fundamental support services and they provide that in a remarkably efficient and friendly way. And secondly, um, they're strong academic people. They're developing new ways of analyzing data, uh, pushing the frontiers of statistics forward, which is what we need because we're exploring new areas that have never been uh, analyzed in, in appropriate ways. So I, I'm a real, real strong supporter of the biostats people. It, it's a key element to, to the research that's going on here both the basic research and the clinical research. You can't do modern biology uh, without a strong biostatistics arm around you. You can't do clinical research. You can't do clinical trial studies. You can't do basic research. You can't do genetics research. Um, you can do a single person. You can study what happens in a single rat or a mouse or a person. Um, but if you want to uh, ask the question more broadly, um, then you need some statistical basis to first design the studies and secondly analyze the data from those studies. So it is a cornerstone of everything we're doing here in research. And there's great synergy uh, in put, when we put grants together. Uh, the biostatisticians are written into the grants as part of the principal investigators of, of these grants. And, and that creates a, a very strong um, interdependence, both financially, um, because this is how we make our living, but also, and more importantly, scientifically. Um, so I think the synergy that's created uh, between uh, the biostatisticians and, 
and the biomedical researchers here is, is, is very strong and we have a strong level of interdependence. I feel that biostatistics is one of the essential basic sciences, so to speak, for outcomes research and for population science uh, studies. It's really important and the best thing for the college for both the statistical collaborator and the principal investigator to have a national reputation and be doing work that's on the cutting edge of uh, the methods that are available nationally. I think that the PhD program in biostatistics really adds to the national credibility of the group and, and adds to the academic milieu. I wouldn't be able to do the work that I would like to do at, at my organization without a partnership like this, without um, people who are interested in the very same things, who are able to bring in the resources, um, the research background, um, the data sources and methodologies. Th those are all things that I don't understand. Those are all things that, you know, I have, I have this much information um, but I, I can only take that so far and so I think the Division of, of Epidemiology and the PhD program allow me to take all those things and, and create something, something really valuable um, to policymakers to um, uh, contributing to the reversal of segregation in metropolitan Milwaukee. Having a core partnership with the medical colleges Division of Epidemi Epidemiology has really helped us gain credibility quickly and has also helped us raise funding because instead of being a brand new nonprofit agency, we now have a very established partnership. So there's that level of, again, sort of instant credibility. And then also, really, the partnership has brought a lot of rigor to our program development. It's really nice to have an evaluation team involved from the ground up and as we design and launch all of our programming. So I founded an agency, the Milwaukee Center for Children and Youth, explicitly to prevent the occurrence and recurrence of child maltreatment. And looking at this as an epidemic, as a disease of sorts, has been really helpful in thinking about ways to systematically prevent it rather than sticking at the level of working with individual families, which indeed we do, I can now start to frame my work and not in you know these sort of rosy terms, which I do, which is I'm going to change the world. No, I'm going to change the health of populations. I mean, it brings a different perspective to the table. The partnership that we have with Dr. Cassidy and Dr. Young is wonderful for us because they bring to the table information that we on our own would not have. And the ability to take that information and to put it in a statistical chart so that we can start to see more long range implications about the issues that affect the women that we work with. And so to me, I think it's a very critical point for us because it not only gives us the validity, but it also allows us to um, have access to the kind of research materials that's going to help enhance the work that we do. As a future physician, one of my career goals is to be able to practice in other parts of the world. And so for me, having the Global Health Program is extremely valuable because it allows me to start working towards that goal now while I'm a medical student. And it's provided me with um, opportunities to connect with people that work in other parts of the globe and start gaining some of the tools that I need to be able to do that and practice in my future career. So as an academic medical institution, it's vital that MCW have a program like the Global Health Program that provides resources for people who are interested in being able to practice in that way. I really think without the Global Health Program, I wouldn't have been able to do any of those things. I wouldn't have been able to spend the summer abroad and actually accomplish research. You know, I don't even think I would have made it there without having them as such a great support structure and able to really show me the way and help me to learn things like how to navigate an IRB in a different country or how to write a protocol. 
um, even little things like those initial communications, you know, how do you reach out to someone in a different country and say, I'd like to come work with you. And so all of those things have been facilitated for me through the Global Health Program, and it's been a really wonderful experience. The Global Health Program here at MCW has greatly enriched my research and um, uh, experience as a faculty member in the, in the burgeoning career. Through the help of the Global Health Program here at MCW, they've allowed me to support a research arm within that organization that benefits both parties. With the results of what we've done from the last year or two with the research in Uganda, I now have uh, an oral abstract at an international meeting in South Africa in November that I've been invited to do that's purely out of the research that came from um, the Global Health Initiative. As a um, large medical center, there are very complex uh, patients and cases that come through that we see on a routine basis. Uh, and to have the uh, consultation service uh, available uh, for, for the clinicians at uh, this hospital and actually all the hospitals, uh, all many of the hospitals in the city, uh, allows uh, a resource again for uh, clinicians and uh, ethicists at, at various institutions to um, get some input on complex problems. Uh, on a different front, I think um, as an alumnus of the medical college, I think it's extraordinarily important uh, for uh, student physicians to to learn, you know, right and wrong, and and, um, and as it pertains to ethical decisions, um, and uh, have that be part of their their ongoing learning and practice as they go forward. This program was really essential, and and has proven to be essential in my career now. Many of the legal matters and questions that I deal with have significant ethical considerations, and. All of the training and the tools and the resources that I uh, had the advantage of, of gaining in the program have just really helped me to approach problems in a very thoughtful and analytical way. I think the Center for Bioethics is, is critical in medical education. I, I, I don't see how you could actually run a medical education program without a strong bioethics component. A lot of the practice of medicine is being intensely data-driven through electronic medical records and electronic billing and tracking systems. A lot of medicine is data-controlled, but the art of medicine really, really requires you to have a grounding and understanding of the complexity of not only the biological and psychological aspects of your patients, but also those important ethical considerations and how the treatment of individual patients really has broad implications for the families and for um, society and, and social policy as a whole. The strongest thing about the program here at the Medical College of Wisconsin is that it's focused very and grounded uh, very strongly in clinical applications and in the practical use of ethical principles. For all the medical students, it's the only chance in our four years to get an exposure to humanities or ethics in specific because, you know, we might not have had two years of ethics before we came to med school. Um, and that's obviously important because it's medicine. You know, Tuskegee didn't just happen and we all became ethical overnight. It's an ongoing process and I think it's really nice to have preceptors and Dr. Dursey and all the staff come in and tell us that this is relevant to our training. And I think that's really what the MPH program brings is the best practices, the best skills, and then we share that with the practice settings and it just moves public health forward. I found value in the fact that I gained this understanding of public health on a local level, a national level, and a global level. And so I really found that from this deeper understanding, as a student, I was able to develop this actionable way to stimulate change and foster growth and development improvements within a population and really empower a population. I also think that part of the value comes from the organization overall, and that organization really values research and forward thinking and 
strategic developments and community partnerships and there were so many little intricacies that I loved about the program that were valuable to me. The online program really allowed me to have a work life school balance and although I went through the program fairly quickly because I was a full-time student, I was still able to manage a schedule and although it was hectic, I'd get through it in two years. And so the program is really accommodating, I think, to all different students and I really appreciated that about the opportunities that I had and the people who I was able to meet throughout that time that I had here. The Violence Prevention Initiative is vital to the, the Medical College of Wisconsin because it takes the researchers out of you know, their offices here in, in, in Wauwatosa and puts them in the heart of the city and in the heart of the need of the city. So they have a true understanding of what uh, the, the community residents are like, what they need, uh, what they're looking for, what the, what's, what's helpful to them, and also the direct service providers what, what, uh, how they work, how many hats they're wearing, how it's best for them to collect the data. And I have no way of knowing how they, else they would be able to do that if the Violence Prevention Initiative didn't provide them with the opportunity of having an office out in 3rd and Martin Luther King Drive. What the Violence Prevention Initiative has done is it's made an opportunity for organizations to really unite around the issue in order to move in the same direction in a coordinated and intentional way to make some real long-term change. The VPI is vitally important to the Medical College of Wisconsin because it's really brought the Medical College into the community. And so the young people we work with, our youth and our families, they know now that the Medical College is not just a building full of medical students and doctors, but it's an entity that is out in the community and really interested in making change, making positive impact on quality of life issues. And so they're seeing how the medical college is directly impacting their lives and their communities in a way that I don't think they've been able to do before right in their neighborhoods. The health equity uh, division and um, the staff along with um, the faculty involved, uh, Dr. Votes in particular, important to me because it allows an opportunity to work with someone uh, who is actively engaged in education and research uh, within the community. The Health Equity Division is vital to the College of the Medical College of Wisconsin because it uh, expands uh, the footprint of the college locally um, and it lets the community know more about the, the mission of the, of the medical college in terms of being engaged uh, within the community as a partner. And also it is important for the college uh, through Dr. Willis and the division to engage in uh, research to help to, to try to understand some of the issues that the, with, the, with some of the issues related to health equity uh, and the populations uh, that are affected uh, more sore than, than others. As a newcomer to MCW myself and the program in genomics and ethics being new to uh, the institution, uh, our relationships with Dr. Willis as well as the Health Equity Division are vital in, in the relationships that they've built with the community over time. Um, interaction there will be um, necessary as we develop projects in ensuring that genomics and its advancements are, um, the benefits are, are borne by the majority of the community, if not all of the community, and that the risks are minimized to the greatest extent possible both um, within Milwaukee and nationally. With the help of the Global Health Program, we've been able to establish a relationship with the medical school in Managua. We have one of the residents from the Managua Orthopedic Program up with us as we speak. Uh, so it really was, allowed us to broaden um, our horizons and what we were able to do in, uh, in our particular mission. There's, a real hunger that didn't used to be there 10 years ago for international experiences for the medical students uh, and for residents. As you look at what medical students want as they're incoming, one of the highest preferences they have is for international work and experience. So in order to recruit good people to our school and also to our residency programs, an international component is, is vital. I think for teaching, it offers unique 
opportunities in terms of the difficulty in cases, uh, unusual things, and then very high volume of what would be term bread and butter here, but our major problems in underserved areas. Before that time, we really did not have the ability to host individuals from other countries and to allow them access to our clinics and our surgeries and our patients. Uh, these are privileges that we have in, when we're working in Colombia and Peru, and it is a barrier. And with this recent uh, emphasis by the School on Global Health, they've now made it possible to truly host and truly exchange ideas with uh, other people. And I think this will pay big dividends for the school. It's certainly going to help our department. I think the value of the Institute is very similar to what I think is best about the Institute, and that's the people. The people are really terrific. It's just such a wonderful group of staff and faculty and students. But the critical nature of it is twofold. One is that it's interdisciplinary, and so it brings together all different kinds of ideas and academic professions to focus on issues and problems. And then the second piece is that it focuses on community academic partnerships to advance health equity. And it, it addresses it in many different ways, and I think that's the power. It addresses it through the graduate education programs. It addresses it through research and with the link well, with clinical care. And then, of course, through community engagement. And I think that one of the things that's very strong about the Institute and very important to MCW is the focus on population health.